Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you're watching Flick Connection, the show that usually helps you get more out of movies, but today I'm going to be talking about 10 Hidden Gem series you can currently catch on HBO Max. So for this list, if you do not have HBO Max yet, but you have HBO, a lot of these series are available. There are a handful that are only gonna be available with HBO Max. I'll be indicating next to the title up here in the corner whether it's just HBO or HBO Max. And looking at the list, it is quite a mix. There are some animated series, some dramas, some comedies, but let's start all the way back at number 10 with a fairly well-known series from the 60s that you may not realize is hiding out on HBO Max and that is Johnny Quest. Now this was a major hit series back in the 60s and it is for kids but it's fairly adult oriented. There's quite a bit of action, some adult themes that are not really suited for very very young kids and it's a little bit slower paced than what kids are going to be used to today but I've watched several episodes with my son. He loves it and I think I honestly love watching it more. I do have memories of watching this as a kid and I know that my father watched it as a kid so it does have some years on it but this is a surprisingly slick show for the time period or because of the time period it's kind of hard to tell but if you've got some younger kids that might be interested in something a little different than what they're used to Johnny Quest is a great way to go even if you only watch it for a couple of episodes now an animated series that I've been really surprised by that is absolutely not for kids like don't even watch this show with the kids in the house is Harley Quinn I think fans of Rick and Morty will really dig this show it's not as good or or is clever but the type of humor is somewhat similar whereas Rick and Morty a lot of their references are based in movies and science fiction and things like that Harley Quinn a lot of their jokes and references are in comic books and superhero movies but there's a great depiction of the Joker in this show and he is just killing people and loving it like I mean it is adult oriented there's a lot of sexual humor but it is funny, it's well put together, it was a surprise of a show. I gave it just a little try, and it was really kind of surprised at how good the writing actually is on this thing. Larry's a performer, and you should try to think of a performer as a small, helpless child. You know, I have sex with him. I'm so sorry. My number eight pick is The Larry Sanders Show. This was kind of a sleeper hit in the 90s. It stars comedian Gary Shandling as Larry Sanders, who hosts a late night talk show. And it's just really well written. It's very funny. A lot of people in the business, like famous comedians, really love this show. They think it's way better than it got credit for. It's not like Curb Your Enthusiasm, but it had as much promise as something like that, like one of those hit comedy shows from HBO. And it did kind of well in its time, but surprisingly has done even better in recent years as it has kind of made a comeback now that HBO has added it back. So this is one that you can watch with a basic HBO subscription. You do not have to have HBO Max for it, but it is very funny. Obviously, it's got years on it. It looks like it's from the 90s, but if you've never seen it, it's new to you, and a lot of the jokes are not necessarily topical for the time, but I think there's a good chance a lot of you are going to like this show. It's not too specific to any one type of taste. It's just really clever, really well written, and just good funny stuff. Now one that is not funny at all is a mini series that HBO put out years back called Generation Kill. This takes place during the invasion of Iraq. You're following a group of soldiers. It's a fantastic modern warfare mini series. And a lot of what this series actually focuses on is some major events during that war, but also just the breakdown of the chain of command, where there's a kink in the chain of command somewhere, how it just causes everything downhill to really be screwed. It's a very great depiction of modern warfare. If you've never seen this, it's one season. It's very well acted, extremely well produced. As far as miniseries go, I think it's one of the better things that HBO has ever put out. It did have a following back when it came out, but I know it has kind of since been forgotten. If you've never seen it, it's been a while since you've seen something in this genre that was really good. Don't miss Generation Kill. Now while Generation Kill had sort of the production value of a movie, it is fairly cinematic. 
The most cinematic thing on this list is another animated series called Primal. Now this was actually featured on Adult Swim and because HBO Max has Cartoon Network, it's available there. This is about a caveman that teams up with a Tyrannosaurus Rex and they go on adventures. Now the cool thing about this is there's no dialogue. This is almost like a silent film with sound effects and things, but they go on these crazy adventures with these weird creatures that are kind of basically dinosaurs, but you know, there's one episode with a bunch of giant snakes. And this is a very difficult show to describe. I feel like I'm not doing it justice, nor can I, but you get these short 20 minute adventures with these two characters that yeah, a man and a Tyrannosaurus Rex, while they didn't exist in the same time period, this is a fantasy show that is just really well done. And this also is not for kids, it can be very graphic, but again, extremely cinematic. Every shot that they create in this is not only interesting, but it's a work of art. And then the stories are really great. For a 20 minute story that has no dialogue, this show does a fantastic job of keeping you glued to your seat. If you like the concept and you're into the idea of sort of seeing the beautiful cinematography and colors of this show, this one is not to be missed. And then my number five pick is actually the last animated series on this list. There's a lot on here, but they're all great. But this one is one of the greatest animated series ever created, and that is Batman the Animated Series. Now, I've recently started watching this with my son. He's about to turn five. It may be a little bit too mature for him. It's right on the edge because it is very, very well written, much like some of the other ones I've talked about. This is written for adult minds. Now, it's not totally inappropriate for kids, but the drama and the mystery that unfolds in these is really fantastic. Now, this was a hit show in the 90s, but it's got a great soundtrack. The look to it still looks really good, especially on HBO Max. It's an HD version. It pops better than it did when I was a little kid, because yes, I did watch this when I was very young, but just going back and watching it now, it is a great, great show. Anybody that's been a fan of anything Batman, even if you only like the Christopher Nolan movies, you should give this a try because you get a good sense of Batman and Bruce Wayne as being a detective. The vision of Gotham is really fantastic. It's not only this big sort of art deco looking city. You've got a lot of vintage cars and things. Again, it's just a fantastic depiction of Batman. It's one of the best. It's way up there with some of the best Batman movies. And it's a series with a ton of episodes currently available on HBO Max. Now speaking of great detectives, Perry Mason is a new release series. It's one of the newest ones on this list. And while it does have very, very good reviews, it's not widely appreciated like some of the other series on HBO. I think it deserves it. This one has an incredible look to it. It looks better than most movies put out today. It's very well acted. It does suffer from that little thing that shows like this suffer from, that they feel like they stretch it out a little bit in some episodes. But while I do find that to be a problem with a lot of shows produced today, Perry Mason only has that a little bit. It mostly keeps moving and keeps developing. If you love anything noir, old school detective stuff, while Perry Mason is obviously a reboot of an older show, it does feel very fresh and new. It feels like it's something onto itself and also has that old school detective element that I absolutely love. I love the time period, the way it looks in this show is great. The main character is fantastic. Some of the supporting characters are great, but the inciting incident at the beginning of the show is very upsetting. So if you've got a weak stomach, especially for anything happening to children, you may want to skip this one because it is pretty intense, but very well done. Now the newest show on this list is How To With John Wilson. This was a surprise hit for me. I had no idea what to expect with this, but I watched all the episodes and I absolutely love this show and it's very difficult for me to tell you why, but I recommend trying one episode. If you're not into it after 15 minutes then this show is not for you. This is one guy with a camera, mostly in Manhattan doing sort of a documentary style show. This is actually produced by Nathan Fielder, the creator and star of Nathan For You, who is just, I think, a comedy genius. In this show, How To With John Wilson, only features John Wilson. He's almost exclusively behind the camera. He does have a little bit of an annoying voice, but I probably do too for some people, but it's very, very clever. It's sort of a video essay style, akin to something you might find here on YouTube, but he's pairing what he's saying 
which can be pretty poignant things with weird images that he's captured all over New York. I cannot explain it better than that, but it works. And he manages somehow in what seems like nonsense, he manages to get at the heart of different topics, almost like he does it organically. I don't know that that's totally possible. You'll kind of get what I mean. Watch one episode. If you're not into it, it's not for you, but I imagine several of you are gonna be completely surprised with the show because it just feels like something completely new that I've never seen before, and I love it for that. It's also really funny. I don't know if I said that. It is really funny. Now my number two pick is probably the most famous show on this list. It really had a moment in the late 90s, early 2000s, but it fizzled out and just sort of died on the vine. And that is Mr. Show. Now this stars comedian David Cross, who's very famous. You've seen him in a lot of stuff. And Bob Odenkirk, who has gone on to become really famous from his role as Saul in Breaking Bad and of course Better Call Saul. But this show is a sketch comedy show that is brilliant for a couple of reasons, but a big one that it was known for is just pay attention to the way that they transition from sketch to sketch. There's always some sort of connection. They don't just jump to a new sketch. It's very clever in that way. And a lot of times the show will open with the two of them talking about what seems like nonsense and the show will manage to circle back to it but it's just a 30 minute sketch comedy show with a lot of absurd, funny things. And also, a lot of the jokes that they created back then are things that have kind of come true today. When you watch the show, you'll see that. There's also just a lot of silly nonsense in there as well that is just a lot of fun to watch. If you love the show, there's also sort of a reunion series on Netflix that's just called With Bob and David. It's almost the exact same show. It only runs for a few episodes, but it is a weird brand of humor, but it's a clever brand and a good one that I think a lot of people will appreciate. Now, my number one pick is another detective show, but it's very dark, very well done, and I talked about some of these being very cinematic. Not only is this one cinematic, but the episodes are extremely long, making each episode basically like its own movie. This show stars one of my favorite actors, Idris Elba, as Luther, this really edgy London detective. And honestly, in sort of a predictable fashion, he's the detective that doesn't play by anybody's rules. But the show itself, not only is it very dark, the villains that they create and write for the show are very fleshed out and very sinister. And it's all delivered really, really well. Like I said, each episode is like a movie and a very good one at that. There are multiple seasons available. Each one is only a few episodes long. So you could go through this entire series about as quickly as you could just one season of almost any other show, but it's extremely good, which is why I put it at number one and fairly unknown here in the US. I hope you enjoyed this list. I hope you find one or two new series that you can binge watch sometime soon. If this video gets a decent amount of views, likes, and comments, then I will do more videos on series like this in the future. It's been a while since I've done one that was not just for channel members. So I hope you enjoy this one. Let's thank the Patreon supporters for supporting this video. I'm able to kind of branch out and do things I normally wouldn't do because of these guys. Also, my channel members, there are links to sign up to either in the description below. And if you like content like this, channel members do get access to exclusive videos. I just recently released one about multiple shows and have done so in the past. And we'll do again in the future, whether I do here on the main channel or not. But I will continue making my regularly scheduled videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for watching this special episode and you will see me on the next one.